and the ideas that they talk about, they talk about politics, sure, but the big thing I take from it is they're idealistic. It's teams coming together, people coming together to make difficult, difficult, difficult answers and difficult decisions on a regular basis, but they're trying to do good in the world. And so that's in the background as I'm planning for everything I'm doing. One of the phrases that you seem to show a lot is what's next. And I feel like I say that off and on throughout my entire career, is what's next. And there's always something next. When I ask what's next, it means I'm going to move on with the thing. So, what's next? What's next? Who's the next meeting? Well, bring the tenure projections, the region board, and the magic wand. Yes, the thing is going What's next? What's next? Who's next? What's 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 next? just throughout, what's next? There's always something. I feel like I work with that kind of mentality where there's always something else. And even though we want to enjoy today, we have to care about tomorrow and plan for tomorrow. Whatever teachers you have now that you think are great that you learn from and ones that you don't, when you have professors in college that you learn from, some that you don't, there's friends and family that you learn from, some that you don't. One thing about all those, you really are learning from them. You're learning things to do and what not to do. This is someone I met this year. He's part of the Little Rock Nine. That is the first nine African-American students were allowed into a predominantly white school way back in the day. And what really shocked me about his story was I've seen the pictures of the National Guard not letting him in. I've seen the pictures of people throwing things at him. What he was telling me, though, was there was thousands of kids who wanted to go to this school. But when they talk about it in history, there's 15 kids that got whittled down to nine, and ultimately eight. But all those kids wanted to go, but there was so much fear, there was so much hate out there, that the parents didn't feel strong enough to send them there, and they whittled down to nine. These nine kids, younger than anyone in the room, talked about how they were going to handle that. And the way they decided to handle it was in a non-violent way. No matter what came at them, no matter who started fights, who threw the first punch, anything, they're going to be non-violent and they're going to win the day. Those are kids changing the world and they're younger than you. So when we talk about changing the world and making an impact, it doesn't matter what your age is, it's just when your moment comes, you take it. And then how do you make it? So there's a lot of things that sometimes people think that I do just because I do it, but there's a reason for almost everything that I do. And this phrase, make it, make it a great day. Make, make it a great day. It's the background of every episode for eight years, even the year that I didn't do it, just because it starts to become part of the culture. And so, Wait, make it a great day, Grizzly. The idea is, when you wake up in the morning, you have a decision. Are you waiting for the world to give you a great day? Are you wishing that somebody gives you a great day? Or do you wake up in the morning and you go, I'm going to make it a great day? That's up to you. That's at the end of every single one. Because of that reason. So do you have one? Make it a great day. Or do you make it a great day? It was it, a great semester. It's a choice. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and make it a great day. So my master teacher way back in the day told me about that, and ever since then, I was trying to find a way to bring it to a larger audience, and literally do it. Yes. So we have, some, we have some people in the room. So this is Ryan Sharp right here. You're going to see him a couple times here, actually. <laughs> Yes, that sounds like a gladiator movie. Yes, it was from there, but it's actually a movie. <laughs> You're living in a world of social media, so literally some of the things that you do will keep echoing and showing up every year in May on whatever thing's there, and you can't get rid of it. It just keeps showing up over and over again. Okay, that's the fun part. All right, yeah. There. All right, you know, go on BuzzFeed. Or Reddit, or whatever else is the next thing showing up. Um, but also... What we do in a positive way that people don't see 
that you can't quantify, that you can't take a photo of, does that same thing. I heard a stat that we as people are forgotten within three generations. So if that's really the case, if no one says my name in three years, what I want to do with my life is make some differences and make some ripples that go through eternity, even if my name's not there, but I can have an impact on life. That's what I want to be able to do. On the left is a picture of my mom. My mom is where I, I learn my, my heart, my soul, my service. Whenever she can, she's giving back. She's helping the neighborhood. She's helping out with the church. She's making new things at her church because they don't have it. She's always stepping up to do the extra and help the people around her. When I was young and I was in high school, she was doing daycare. And we were, she would always do something extra for the kids and extra for the parents. And everyone was saying, why are you doing this? It, you, you just, you're killing yourself over it. You're spending money on it. You spend energy on it. Just relax. And she was like, no, the kids deserve it. I feel like that's where I get part of me is from that. The right is a picture of my dad, who was a national rugby player and a captain. That's a, actually a photograph of him. Uh, he passed away when I was three years old. But I don't know if there's somebody who impacts me more on a daily basis than him. Whatever the records are or the scores were is not what's told to me about him. What's told to me about him is how he made people feel, what he did for them, what was the impact he really made. So when we talk about echoing through eternity, that's what he's doing. People might not know Tony Siramana, but I do, and I'm gonna take that with me, and I'm gonna allow that to echo through eternity in whatever way I can. Because it's still, again, it's not about the name, it's about the impact. And I want to do the same thing and honor him for everything that I do. So these two are the shoulders that I stand. A lot of things I don't share in my class because I feel like it's bragging. That's not my mentality. But in this, it's a little different. You've got to show where you come from and what you've done and how you've done it. And I think it not only adds validity, but it, it shows what you can do. I'm five foot nothing. And those are just... <laughs> That's not a laughing moment. <laughs> I'll tell you what number. And I had a lot of success. And it was not based on talent. It was based on the work that I put in. Purely the work that I put in. This 10,000 hours uh, principle or mentality is the idea that if you spend 10,000 hours on anything, you can become an expert in it. They did a study with talent versus work ethic. 10,000 hours? Talent meant nothing. It started put it, clicking for me when I when I read that. It was not that many years back that that came out. But it started making sense. Because I'm like, uh, nothing. Five to nothing, right? But how am I doing this? It was the work I was putting in when people weren't putting in. It's the extra that I was doing when no one was doing it. It's getting the gym keys and going to the, the gym and playing every Sunday with my big man. That's what it was. We were putting in that work so that the rest didn't matter. That's what we did day in, day out. Um, yeah, I felt like when people talk to me about this age, this day, those 10,000 hours, that lifetime that I was living, like 10,000 hours, that's 10 years. So the idea is that in 10 years, you can do anything, be an expert at it. If you're really putting in work, seven years is a possibility. I look at that as like a lifetime. You can spend a lifetime on one thing and be able to switch to the other. Before I knew that, before I was thinking about West Wing and knew what was next, I realized I had done my thing. I had my success there. I was able to work at Magic Johnson's basketball camp with this guy. I get to play with, with my hero. Like That's one of those things of like, I'm good. What's next? But people were wondering if I was wasting some talent. But in, inside of me, I knew it wasn't talent without saying it out loud or even really knowing it. The idea was, I knew that there was something else for me. For my buddy, he was like, no, this is a trajectory, this is where I'm going. So now he's a coach for the Dallas Mavericks. This is a picture of him with the basketball without borders. I think they call it NBA Cares now. But this is him in Africa playing with the players down there and coaching. So he took what we were doing and the mentality that we were doing and, and working on and taking it to another level. And I took it in a different direction. We, neither one of us were sacrificing our gift. We were just doing it in different ways. Oh my God. The part that made us so good, and the reason why I believe I got success in that arena, literally, was the fact that 
we knew how to function as a team. You know, my, my hero was Magic Johnson, and what he did well was, he was a point guard, and his job was to make everyone else look good. It wasn't about him looking good, it was about making everyone else look good. He cared where a shooter wanted to catch, catch the ball before they shot. They liked it up high, they gave it to him up high. They liked it down low, he gave it down low. He did what was best for them to make them look good. And then when he needed to, he would step up and take over for, at that time, the best player in the world, Kareem. And when he got hurt, they still won a championship because Magic stepped up to play a different role when he needed to. But that's not what he played every day. That same mentality is what I try to take to what I do right now. And that same team mentality is what I keep chasing after, which is this picture right here. And Ryan again. This is a showdown at Sundown 5K. It was the only North County nighttime race that was going on. We did it for three years. It was a whole bunch of work. Um, these are just one of the light generators that we put up. Like, we put generators everywhere so people would run at night. They do one in San Diego, but it wasn't as good. At least that's what I'm going to say on film. And, <laughs> but the work that it took from some people who, like, knew how to run a race, you know, run a whole race, and then you know some systems. Like, we just figured it out and did it. But that was what you could find. So for those athletes in the room and the people who like to work in a team, and you graduate, and you leave, and you move on to that next thing, you can still have that thing that you loved now there, but it'll just be different. And it'll still be wonderful. It's just you gotta pay attention to it. And look. Wow. What, what some people don't know, <laughs> yeah. What some people don't know is that I run half marathons, run half marathons, um, <laughs> And I do it a couple times a year. I just don't tell people. I usually just take off a Monday to recover and then come into Tuesday again. The the reason I run them, and I'm not in good shape right now, um, is the fact that I'm just stubborn. Like my mentality is to go out there, not stop moving, stay focused, and just keep going. That's it. Like I should be training. I was smart of training, but but I'm not apparently. I'm just going to go. But the thing was is that. I've learned a lot from this, not just from running, but about myself. Like usually, like when I'm running, it's not telling me what physical shape I'm in, it's telling me what mental shape I'm in. Because at mile nine, mile 10, your brain's telling you a whole bunch of things to give up. Like, oh, your knees are gonna go out. You can't walk for a while. Like your ankle's hurting. Like, you can't even feel your arm. You know where your arm is? Like there's so many things that your brain's telling you that are not normal and everything's telling you to quit. And you're really just fighting mentally with yourself. The athletes in the room, you know what that means. Like there's times where you're just trying to give up. But those non-athletes in the room, those ASB kids in the room, those one kids in the room, those people out there in the workforce now, you know those, there's, those, there's those moments where you're tired, you want to give up, people are telling you no, and you just got to keep going. But literally, running this, these races have brought my attention to one thing in, in particular. It's the fact that I'm racing to get to the end, but there's a way that I can get there. I don't have to get there the fastest. I can try not to stop, but if I need to, uh, I got to. But the other thing is, there's people around me. And while I, all those things are in my head telling me to quit, to give up, and there's doubt, and there's like, hey, this song I don't like right now, I'm gonna switch this playlist. Like, um, but everyone else out there is thinking the same thing. Everyone else out there are having those same doubts. So in this room right now, too, there's some people like, who are about to move on and to graduate. You're having those doubts, you're having those things, but you're not the only person in that race. Everyone else around you is thinking the same thing. They're not just saying it out loud. So this last race that I ran in, I got down to the last 300, and like I got in my head, like, I know what I'm doing. As soon as I'm making that turn, I'm sprinting, and really, I'm counting the number of people I'm gonna pass. Like, I'm just gonna sprint, I'm getting, it. that's my mentality. But I turned and started going, and then I saw there's like started to be a commotion on the side. Someone had fallen down. And it was serious. So people were running over to help. There was no medics right there. It was like right in between, like it was right in the right before the finish line stuff. And there happened to be two firemen who were like in front of me who ran over to go help. And I came over too, but they told me we got this, we're fine, we got it, we can do everything in there. And they saved their life. But I came over just to see and they're like, no, you're good, keep going. I'm like, okay. So I kept going and I finished and I made sure I called up with them later and talked to them about it. And what I realized from that is I'm running this race and there's all these people around me thinking the same thing, going through the same things, and here's somebody who went through something extreme and some people pulled over to help. Some people kept running. Some people put blinders on and were oblivious to something going on. Everyone's trying to get to the finish line. 
the, the idea is you got two ways to run this race that we're doing. You can either run, put your head down, ignore everyone around you, or you can be a part of that, that world that's going on. You can pull over and help. What kind of person do you want to be? You want to get to that finish line, and that's what it's about? Or do you want to help the people around you make an impact along the way? You can do that. And really, for those of you who are trying to make it there first, if you get there first, try yourself. We have people who are coming to our life, we have people who are out of our life. For those seniors, that feels a lot more real right now. Um, but you have friends who come in, friends who will go. And that's not a negative, that's life, it comes and it goes. But the thing about it is, you have a choice of what you want to do with that. Some of those friends who come and go, you can leave and have a negative thing, like they don't care about me anymore. But they're going through their own thing, they're in the middle of their own race. They're trying to figure out what's next for them. Maybe not have that negativity associated with that, just hope that they come back in. There's some friends I see all the time, but that's just because they're right here that I work with. There's some people I don't see all the time, but they know that I care. And then they, and I know that they care. You can have that same thing when you go out there. But the idea is every single day, are, are you making it where it's worth? Are you making it a great day? Are you figuring out what's next? I guess, well, I'll get to that. So I have to kind of quote a hashtag from someone in the room, um, to find your tribe. You get to decide who's in that race with you. As you're running that race and there's 50 people around you, you can choose who's going to come closer to you, who you're going to help, who you're going to help up if they get hurt. Um, so this is a former student of mine over here, taking a photograph. These are those two right there. Um, this is when Ryan proposed. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you about this ahead of time, but I was going to do it anyway, so you have to deal with it. So I get to hike up to this spot that was like 10 miles up. Every time I told this story, I've added a mile. Because <laughs> it's like 10, 11 miles up. <laughs> and I was up there for days. <laughs> and I, and I, took, I took some stuff, like some pictures and stuff that he had to propose to his now. Um, and then a former student came up to take a picture of it. And so the thing about finding your tribe and the people around you, you don't know who that is. Like right now, your tribe's going to change. But it's up to you to find who you want to be around you, who's going to challenge you. Who's going to make you better? You have that choice to, to do that. Some people are going to come, some people are going to go, how are you going to get better? And you don't know what's next. All you can do is try to make the best decisions you can so that your tribe you know, makes you better and you can make a tribe better. And like, like I said, you have no idea where that's going to lead you, lead you to. If I get to marry these two, I got the honor to marry these two. That was nothing that I expected to happen, but uh, you know, apparently I got the hashtag bridge. <laughs> <laughs> That's funnier to us because that is what the what the tie clip says on it. It's not that crazy that they got on. So, yeah, yeah, um, this is not a plug for me to come marry you, but I'm expensive. <laughs> Okay, I know I told this to the one class. I don't share this all the time, but when I first took over the news program, it was not going to happen on campus. It was done, they had some issues, whatever. And like, I went and got some kids together who were in my plus group. I was like, hey, what do you think about us taking this over? And they're like, we don't make videos. I was like, that's a technicality. But the idea was that we wanted to get more to our campus. We believed our campus should have that. So we made one video. One video, literally. And I took that to the principal with the back of these students going, yeah, we can do it. And I was like, hey, let me have it. Here's my vision for it. And they're like, you can make videos? I'm like, yeah, watch this. They're like, oh, that's pretty good. Basically like a Nike basketball knockoff. Um, <laughs> but what happened with the four square ball, but whatever. We made it happen, and we did it. And I was told over and over again, good luck. Because they're like, have you used a Mac before? And I'm like, oh yeah. We use Final Cut, it's a really crazy program and it's intense. Like the director of technology was like, oh man, it's gonna take years. I'm like, oh yeah, like I got it, easy. I have no idea what I'm doing. But I'm betting on myself and I'm betting on these kids, which is what I'm doing every single day. I'm betting on the people around me, I'm betting on my tribe. I'm betting on the fact that we're gonna figure it out. We don't need to know those individual things, those are technicalities. When you have people in the room who want to change and impact the world and make make a difference, that's what I bet on. Really? I'm honored right now because that's everyone in this room. 
And it's the people who show up. Everyone around, around the back. If you're doing something, you've done something, you've been a part of something that was more, and you're giving more, like, and you're here, I guess, because I was part of that. But really, it's you guys doing it. It's all you're about to graduate. You're part of doing that. And you're about to take a risk for those seniors who are going to the next spot. I bet on you. The question is, you know, are you betting on yourself? You should. And you prove it to me day in, day out. Uh, I, <laughs> I, part of this, when we talked about it with, with previous seniors, was nuggets of information that I thought would be useful so you can pick one or two things. So it kind of bounces around a little bit between different ideas and different philosophies with the idea that how I'm able to do some things. So this is one of them. Like this is, I literally uh, put out a picture of Jerry West basketball player with the NBA logo, that's him. Um, I felt like I couldn't take days off. That's what's gonna get me to that next level. That's what's gonna allow me to do what I can do. That's when I have this vision of trying to get to this spot and do these things, what's gonna take it there. Like I try not to take any days off. This is a moment of weakness. Or rest, we'll say, um, patience. <laughs> Where I fell asleep in between homecoming prep, and the kids were so nice to help me out by just taking a photo of me. <laughs> um, this did lead to me getting an espresso machine in my office, and led to, I guess, the way that I am. Um, but that work and that extra also got me to be able to sign for my new they've been asked to take a photo before. And I said, I, I have an Instagram following it. <laughs> so, all, so all seven of you liked it. I now know you can follow me on Instagram. <laughs> this was, yeah, these are my Christmas cards. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, this is me as Obi-Wan. Um, I know I look like Mace Windu, but whatever. <laughs> One thing about me, like people ask me random questions or they'll say comments to me, and some of them just kind of like, thanks. And it was really, some comments that have been made to me kind of bugged me, and I was trying to figure it out. They're like, oh, well, you can do that. I'm like, what do you mean me? They're like, black well, can pull that off. What does that even mean? What I realized, though, is that like one thing about me that I feel like is I know myself. I don't care if I'm embarrassed by something. I don't care what that risk is, I'm gonna go do it. I feel like that's a positive more than just like, oh, you can do that, you don't care. Because I don't care, it's just, that doesn't matter to me. If there's a bigger goal, that's what's important. The rest is secondary. Me being embarrassed by something, me failing at something, me making a mistake, it doesn't matter. Because that goal is what matters. So, I gotta throw some Drake in there because, you know, <laughs> respect. Um, yeah, I've always been me, I guess I know myself. And then there really is no telling the way. That's for the three people in the um, Again, there's some things that I don't like to brag about, but like I feel like that's important in this moment and what I'm doing. Uh, regrets is something that people have brought up, the seniors, well, how do you deal with that? The only way that I think you can really deal with that is making sure that you're not making those same mistakes moving forward. So like I don't try to think of anything as a mistake as much as like I'm going to improve the next time around. So, we had some fires in North County way back in like 2007 or 8 or something. Oh, yeah, and, I know that. Okay. Yeah, and... We played field hockey in that game. Did you really? We almost died. That was <laughs> yeah. Now I know the year. 2007, you took pictures. Uh, that's probably happened. <laughs> I just thought it was a class. Um, but the thing was, they asked, they asked campus to not come help. They asked campus not to come in. They're just like, hey, just deal with it and you'll be okay. So I did it. I just I was around preparing and taking photos of sports instead. Um, but the next time around, the next time around in like 2011 or 12, we had some big fires in North County, and at that time I was like, this time I'm showing up. So when the email came out and said, please staff don't show up, I was like, I'm showing up. And so I walk into the pavilion, and the principal's there, right next to the head custodian, and the, and the principal turns to the head custodian and was like, I thought we said not to have anybody come in. She's like, are you trying to keep them out? And I feel like that's something I'm trying to live up to every day is that I may not be there every single day, but if there's something coming up, 
I'm going to be there. <laughs> and people know it. Because I'm going. So the question is, is like, time to challenge, controversy, where are you? That's where I feel like when I know that moment's happening, this is the quote that comes into my head every single time is, how do I not regret this? Or what do I need to do to stand up and represent on this day? Represent me. Represent my dad. How do I echo through eternity? Are you ready? ready to say yes? Suit up! Light suit up! Anyone suit it up? Light suit up! Suit up! <laughs> You get older, and you're supposed to be old, and you're not supposed to have fun. That's what I feel like is supposed to happen, but that's not true. And that's never been my case or our case. Um, so this is some of me and my friends. We started teaching together in, at Mission Hills the year that uh, like I came in. It was like year one, how I met your mother came out for me. And then we were teaching together and getting to know each other as friends as how I met your mother's playing. So we got to the season finale, and we watched at my house, if you've seen How Much Mother, well, we suit it up. Because that's what we're going to do. And that's, I feel like that's an illustration of memories. If you just do the norm, if you just do what everyone else is doing, if you're just relaxing, you're not going to remember those moments. It's the moments where you do something extra, you do something extraordinary, something different, something silly. Those are the moments that you're going to remember. And how old you are is really dependent on how old you want to believe that you are. That leads into something really childish. What most people don't know is that back in the day, we went, when I was in charge of PLUS, we did Foursquare on campus. And it was pretty intense. You know, the students are playing. What people didn't know was that during lunch after that week was done, we created our own teacher sport at Foursquare. It was intense. <laughs> like, it was brutal. There was trash talking. Nobody said any bad words that are on tape. And it, but it was, you know, yeah. Um, actually, here's just a moment in it, and the, the people who played Foursquare, a little shout out to someone in a boot, who was just like, oh no, I'm, I'm going to play. And people told me to get your hand, she's like, oh, she's in a boot, she can't do that. And then she just started beating us all. So she's still going to throw that out there, respect the mission. Um, I had so many moments, like, I had so many moments that would be so embarrassing from this floor square, but it wouldn't be fair to do it to my friends because I want to honor them. <laughs> but you can see me. Thanks for taking it easy. So, that went all the way back there. Okay, I had a couple that were one of the Orioles fans up here. I actually 
Um, so I kept that out, but I was, I was pretty high up in the air. Um, but the thing about this was, I feel like there's a bigger message. I'm in the bushes, and every single person in this room, you were laughing and you're like, he's not getting out of the bushes, right? I got out of those bushes. I got back up. I didn't dust myself off. I just got right back in it. And then boring out. But that's the thing, though. Like you're gonna try. You're gonna give it. You're gonna give it your all. And at the end of the day, you still may not win, but it doesn't matter. And I feel like of all moments, this shows who I am because one, I'm having fun. And two, it gets intense in our four square. And if you live every moment like that, you're gonna have fun, you're gonna have these moments. Otherwise, what you have is some random random photo where nothing really happened. This isn't as interesting. This is not as interesting if we were playing art. We would never film it, we're just like playing around. We never would. But if you do the extra, that's what happens. And I have to throw the I have to throw the Andy Bernard in there because it felt right. Like every time I was trying to think of like the good old days, that's what this is. Because right now, you guys are in the good old days, right? And then in 20 years, they're going to be like, remember the good old days? If you make the right life decisions, if you're doing what you're supposed to, if you encircle yourself with the right tribe, no matter what, you're in the good old days. I'm in the good old days. But if you do things right, that's what can happen. And that's what it's like. So when people are telling you, oh, yeah, you forget it's the best times of your life, yeah, it's good times. They're the good old days, but they're all the good old days of you. Uh, well, not <laughs> I also thought it was important because it's an office and you know, since I have a new job and an assistant to the principal, I think that's important. Yeah. Right, that's only funny for the office. Um, really random is when I did my first last lesson, I put this down as a quote that I liked that I read from a book, but I don't think I really knew what it meant, but I was working on it. And I think when I did that in that first last, last, that first last lesson, it changed who I was from that lesson, I think, more than anybody else. But it's this idea that when something happens, we tend to blame other people. We blame other people for it. Like, oh my gosh, it's this person's fault. They didn't do this, they didn't do that. Or we're blaming ourselves. Like, hey, that's my fault. I shouldn't have done this. I'm so sorry. All those things are valid. That's how we get better. However, I like to think that you see this in ASB, and you see this in one. My first reaction is try not to be one of these two. My first reaction is let's just move on. How do we fix it? Let's get to the next thing. If you're in the middle of a game, in the middle of a rally, in the middle of filming something, if you just stop and you start doing this, you'll never be great. It will never be great. You're not going to win that game, that video is not going to be good, all that other stuff isn't going to work out the way it's supposed to. If you start here. You can come back to this and try to figure it out and fix it for the next time around. Improve it the next time around. You should do that. But if your first instinct is to blame other people, blame yourself, that's a negativity that's not is going to keep you from that next step. Try this. Try not blaming people. See what happens. See what happens. I realized when I took on HP two years ago with one and with math and with some other things, I realized it's going to be a lot. So not only am I going to do homework over the summer, I'm going to figure out what I need to do. How do I improve? I need to figure out like how am I going to manage all this. So in that homework, in that struggle, I found out that bullet journaling is something that people did to stay on track. And it's on Pinterest. So it's like my first thing was like, it's on Pinterest, I'm not doing that. But then I started like going, all right, why am I mostly attached to this Pinterest thing? And then I realized there's so much value in it. And then it's me. What do I care? Do people make fun of me in meetings when they see this? Sure. Do they say, why do you spend all this time on it? Sure. But the thing about it is, is this improves what I'm doing. This allows me to do what I'm doing. I write down all the things I need to get done so I don't miss it. Is that a post-it note? Yeah, some people do that. But then what happens when you have an email and you've got people that you've got to deal with? What happens when you someone puts something on your desk and that's not attached to it? What happens if something gives you a folder with some random stuff? What happens if you design something that you gotta build? If that's all in these different places, you're gonna be just as torn, just as torn and making mistakes unless you can get it in one spot. So this is just a couple days worth of like different things of what I need to do and build and plan and whatnot. And the idea was I spent a little extra time on it because while I'm writing stuff down 
and I'm taking, I don't know why that's a slow mo there, but it's really dramatic. Oh my gosh, wait, wait for it. There, right. But like, if you see some of the things in there, is like, I can go to one spot and find the phone number that I call somebody when I'm not home. I can go find the email that the email address that I had to, I couldn't remember as I was in the, like in the front office in a different spot without my computer. So all these, this is me planning my last lesson. It's all in one spot to make me better. So when people are saying, why do you write all this down? I process all that I'm doing and plan out what I need to do. So for example, um, I'll write down some quotes in there to pump me up because I'm like, I need this this week. So I put random quotes in the, in the classroom too. Sometimes that's not about you guys, it's about me because I'm trying to like remind myself to do things. I do that here. While I'm writing things down, I'm also game planning with like, okay, as I'm writing this down, I need to talk to this person. This person's not going to like it, how am I going to deal with it? I'm planning ahead. It's the game planning before a game ever happens. I want to make sure I know the scenario, I know how to succeed in it before I ever show up. That allows me to do that. So I'm sitting there, and yeah, I'm coloring or whatever. But while I'm doing that, I'm thinking all through, I'm processing it. Just before like a game, I would envision every little scenario that I thought would happen. If they run this defense, what am I going to do? If someone goes this way, I'm going to make this move. I think all that through before it happens. Now I just do it in a different way that's not on the court. I handle all those meetings, all those decisions way before I get there. It's also why I lose some sleep because I'm game planning all that before I get there. When I get there, it's easy. Can I just ask what type of pens are using? Hmm. Different ones. I use a Tombow for here and I. My newest thing is fountain pens. Yeah. And the idea of the fountain pens is going back to the records thing, which is the idea that I'm writing every day and you guys see it with the fountain pens. The reason why I have those and I spend a lot of money on them is if I just use some random pen like the pen, which the pen's going to get long. Those are going to run out of ink. The fountain pens, I can keep refilling, and one day, those, everything I did with those, I can hand it off to my kids. That's one more thing like the records that keeps moving on. That's why I have them. Gabby yeah, Dunn bought me one, and every time I look at that white pen, I know that's from Gabby. Like, I try and put the meaning wherever I can. So, and we don't need to see this again. If you want to see this all, go back and Okay, I'm a math teacher. In yeah. high school, I was a basketball player. I'm one, I'm one person at a time, right? I've said this multiple times to my discrete classes, maybe not so much in ASB, but the idea is you can be more than one person. So this is some artwork that I did. Um, my second watercoloring ever. Um, Mrs. Dixon told me that I need to work on my layering, but it's watercolor. I'm a math teacher. I, I don't draw. But the idea was someone told me was your artistic ability ends when you stop doing art. So if you end when doing art as a fifth grader, you're a fifth grade artist. If you end in eleventh grade drawing and painting, you're an eleventh grade artist forever. If you our 40 year old artist, you're a 40 year old artist. <laughs> that wouldn't work out the way I planned. Um, but if you can only do stick figures, you can go back to the last time that you really invested yourself in art. So the thing about this is it's supposed to illustrate that 10,000 hours also. You can be as good as you want to be at something. You don't, it doesn't take the talent, it just takes the time and the fact of where you're going to invest yourself in. So when people say, I'm not good at math, I'm not good at art, I'm not good at whatever, sorry. That, that study came out about the 10,000 hours. You can be good at it. It's just a choice of if you want to be. Uh, so I didn't. Why did I choose this one? Um, for a couple reasons. My girlfriend back in the day in high school would bring me the newspaper. And because my family didn't buy a newspaper, so she would bring me a newspaper with Calvin and Hobson. And I would read it every day. And I was like, why are you giving this to me? She was nice. So she gave it to me and I read it. And so I picked the Calvin and Hobbes out of here to do. Um, and it starts off with, let's try this path over there. And then he's like, I don't see a path. And that's what you guys are about to do. That's what we're doing every day. We don't, there's no path set. We just gotta figure it out. And then it goes on to like, oh my gosh, we're gonna make a path. How are we gonna find this path? There's so many challenges. What are we gonna do? We just fell off a cliff. And they're like, that's a fresh new challenge. Like, how are you gonna handle with those challenges that show up? And then he ends with, the problems with new experiences is that they're so rarely the ones that you choose. That's what you're about to go do. You're going on to that next thing. You're graduating or going to next year or whatever, but you don't know what those things are. It's just how you handle them. If it's a new path, go find it. Go lead it. Go with your tribe. Um, what I should clarify is the one that I did before this was also Calvin and Hobbes, and it was like 
it was like on the one of the covers where I think Helen Hobbs, I think, took a picture. And so when I did that, it really took some risk because I'm like, I'm gonna go spend some money on some paper, some pencils, some erasers. I'm gonna invest the time to do this. I don't know what I'm doing. This looks ugly. What am I doing? Like I'm down myself the whole time. Just like a race, same thing. It gets to the end, I'm like, this is pretty good. And then so I give it to my wife for Valentine's Day because she was the girlfriend who was in the one giving me the comic book. What? <laughs> so you are what you say you are. If you're an artist, you'll be an artist. You'll be a mathematician, you'll be a mathematician. Don't make it happen. You are what you say you are. A superstar. That's no smooth. I have no fear. Speaking of that, you're about to go jump into the world, into that next thing. If it's a senior, a senior into college and work. For those of you here are going into your next whatever juniors who are going into their senior year, you're going in with two things. Either going in with fear or you're going in with faith. You're going in with fear that's like building up inside of you, you're scared about the next thing, or it's the faith in yourself that you know you're going to handle it. Which one is it going to be? Which one wins the day before you start? Are you going to make it a great day or are you going to let fear take over? Are you going to have the faith, the faith in yourself to take those risks and make that thing happen? That's up to you. That's a choice. It hasn't happened yet. It's totally up to you. When you don't dive in, what's on your back? Maybe literally. One of the th one of the things that senior seniors brought up with me was money. Like, we're we gonna talk about money. How are we gonna do this? What, what do we wanna know? So this is the first thing I think of. Like, it's kind of, you know, it's the most notorious quote I can come up with. <laughs> I started off as as a business major, and then or, Psychology major, business major, switch to engineering, and then do engineering. I'm gonna go make that money. I'm gonna be good at it. I can build stuff. I got a mind for it. Start going into it, and then I realized, what's my life gonna be like? And I start mapping that out in my head. What's it gonna be? So my wife and I sat down and we started talking about like, all right, what would our life be like if I we made a different decision? And I went into teaching because we were talking about if I'm gonna be an engineer, then the weekends are saved for that helping people and that percent was not fitting in with, I, with what I wanted to be. And she was a teacher, becoming a teacher, and she was telling me, you should do it. You should do it. I'm like, no. You should do it. I'm like, no. You should, you should do it. I'm like, maybe. And then we had that conversation about making that work. So it finally got out of my head that I'm not trying to make that more money. I'm trying to make more no difference. Like, <laughs> I want to have a bigger impact on people and the world than just like making it my weekend project. And that was the idea of becoming a teacher an educator is trying to get more of that. So that's why this picture also represents that. Was, this is the choice I made with this, instead of just trying to make for more money. I think it, as I'm trying to make that difference, I think it really made me. So near the end of getting my master's, two years ago we sat down with our car. gonna raise me. I got one still, I got math. Just little master's on top of that. And so it popped up like, okay, how am I dealing with all this? Well, the bullet journaling helps me. It keeps me, helps me keep track of stuff. My organization, all the whiteboards in my office, helps me keep track of that. But also, every moment, every moment, I'm trying to uh, multitask. I'm trying to study. So this is me uh, I took the car in to get work done. As I'm getting the car work done, there's a coffee shop in there, and I took my homework with me, so I'm just doing homework. I'll go get a car wash when I kind of need it, but I'm sitting there doing homework. It's an opportunity to do that. Whenever, whenever I have a chance, my car is going to have my homework in there. It's going to have my stuff with me. It's going to have my bullet journal list. all things I need to do. So I can multitask. I can keep going. There's no days off. There's no minutes. The only time I'm going to rest is when I'm all sitting between and home done. Other than that, like, I'm just going to keep going. But really, it's all about just a choice. There's no days off. Um, so people are going to tell you some things are impossible. <laughs> some things are impossible. Um, the picture on the left, the picture on the left is, I was ASB director, I'm at a CATA camp, I'm like trying to figure out well, what am I going to do with all of this, and they have a phone call saying, yeah, the pavilion's flooded, the gym's flooded, you got to figure out a new spot for homecoming. Very good day. And then they hung up on me, and I was like, oh, I gotta? they didn't say that. <laughs> My story is. And I was like, I'm just going to figure this out. Okay. So I'm going through, going through, I called every place nearby, and the only places that were available were like, selling the school just to do it, like, no, we're not doing that. And then it was like, all right, we're gonna think outside the box, we're gonna do a wedding tent, and I was told, no, 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 no. Yeah, we had in a wedding tent. 
You either have to, there's no other option, you just gotta do it. The picture on the right <laughs> is kind of, I like to throw in some things that are really random. Um, my father-in-law played uh, beach bocce ball in the World Beach Bocce Ball Contest in Del Mar, and he, he won it a few times, like quite a few times. And his, him and his partner, they did it for years. And his partner got hurt, like hurt his shoulder. And my father-in-law was like, hey, you wanna play with me? I'm like, nah, I sat there and watched this whole time. You know, it's just fun, like that's your thing. And he's like, no, you should play with me, just have lots of fun. I'm like, all right, love some fun. And his partner was like, what do you really think you're gonna play? Do you think you're gonna win? You're being on the sidelines. You're, you're a sidelines guy. And I was like, don't say it. <laughs> I was like, challenge accepted. I'm like, oh, we're doing this. I get my father in law, I'm like, we're doing this. So we lost. <laughs> but we won the next year. And then we won again. And then people were like, why did you stop playing? I'm like, I think I've done enough. I'm on, I'm on to what's next. But seriously, we won the Open Division for two years, and it's just one of those random things that if you Google my name, it pops up, I don't tell people about. But it was just one of those things of like, no, I don't have time for this, but if someone challenged me, I'm going. Let's go. Yeah, we, it's like a whole day thing, and yeah, I'm kind of good. Or at least it was. You're going to get through a lot of tournaments first to get, get my get my level. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot to do this one in there. I didn't realize what I had this photo, but oh my God. So, wait, look, this is this is before I was a teacher at Mission Hills. But look at the background. It's Mission Hills. So I did my student teaching on this campus because there wasn't a senior class. So the six hundreds were open. So me, Mr. Miller, Mrs. Miller, I don't know who that dude is. <laughs> Let's see who, Mr. Hackmar. Uh, Mr. Redlings, and there's like four other people who don't teach here anymore, all did our student teaching together. We were all here, and I didn't realize that I was going to be here. But the thing about it was, is back then, I was a math guy, so I got to talk about something about math. So, my something about math back in the day was related to now is playing the percentages. As you're making decisions, and you're moving forward, and you're trying to like figure out how you're going to do something, or how you're going to be successful at something, I'm telling you, play the percentages. This doesn't mean that you're going to go out and gamble. No. What, what I mean by that is, if you know that you're like a 50-50 chance to get something, or like to have succeeded something, do the things to get you that 60% or that 70%. If you know that you're supposed to be a shoe-in for something, there's no shoe-in. That just means it might be 90%. What are those extra percents that you can gain by doing something? If you know that it's impossible and it's a 0% and you're not going to win a World Watch Ball Tournament, what are you going to do to increase that percent? There's no 100%. There's nothing that's guaranteed. There is nothing that's guaranteed. But what you can do is keep putting yourself in a position to increase that percent to get as close to 100 as possible. You can do that. So as you're making a decision, you're like, why didn't I get something? Why didn't this happen? Why didn't... Are you increasing your chances, increasing your percentages to do that? Because the thing is, just like that four square video, four square video where I'm diving, I can increase my chances. I feel like I'm going to get it. You still may not get it. You could have been the 99. There's still a one percent. But are you doing everything to give me that best chance? Because at the end of the day, you can be proud that you did everything you could to make it happen. This is a random book. So sticking with that math theme, this is our student store over there. HP knows it, but not anyone else does. Um, we had two large refrigerators in there. One large refrigerator broke. That's calling around, seeing who needs to pay for it and what, $4,000. The answer to that, put another four, replace, the, replace that fridge. There's another one that was here the same year. That's gonna break soon, the door's broken, all right, there's another four grand, that's eight grand. So the answer is, put eight grand, pay for two fridges. Or, we can think a little different and come up with multiple answers to the same thing, which is the idea of why we took the eight grand, put it into buying smaller fridges that were more useful, building storage across the back, displays, painting every surface that's in there, building a side of light from Home Depot, putting four microwaves in a rolling cart, which is getting a TV to go up in the corner, which is redoing the floor, building a new countertop across the front. It's getting art from the art department to sell in here. That's bowls, mugs, pictures, that's all of that. That's multiple answers to the same thing. 
can answer it in one way, or you can answer it in multiple ways. I like to think that like, if you go out there, try and think if you can do it in multiple ways. There's not always one answer, it's not multiple choice. I don't believe in luck. I don't. I believe in cause and effect. I feel like the world is, that's how it works. You do something, you get something. You do something, you get something. It's still percentages though, it's like things aren't guaranteed. I believe that, except for one thing. This is my, my girlfriend back in, in high school. This is us driving to homecoming. Um, that's me with hair. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is us so many years later getting married. Um, what I tell what I tell the kids is that's my last day with hair. We made a deal that I would have hair for, for the wedding photos. Um, I'm more efficient that way. I'm very dynamic. <laughs> Um, my family was not thrilled with that decision, <laughs> but what I told them was there's so many things in life that I'm not sure of. You can play the percentages, but there's some things that are beyond us and are just meant to be, and that's why it was so easy for that to happen. It's just supposed to be, and I'm lucky for it. Everything else, just, that's the world. This, um, this is a more recent photo, because I can. Right. This is on vacation, but it's a bus. Alright, um, I, start, I start at the beginning with a with a song by Most Def, and but you guys weren't really listening to it, but that's what this is based on. Hey, guess what? Love you. Yeah. I love you. Okay, all right. <laughs> guess, what, guess what I learned at school today? What? Love you. I knew it. <laughs> hey, Paisley, do you want someone to tell me today? What? Love you. <laughs> I knew it. So it's a game that we play, but it illustrates the fact that, like, every day I tell them and they know it. And so it's a game. But the idea is from that song that started at the very beginning is tomorrow may never come for you and me. Life is not promised. I'm no perfect man. I'm just trying to do the best that I can with what it is I have. And that's really what I'm trying to do. And every single day, like the way that I show camp is that I love you guys by the work that I do, though I don't say it. With my family, it's easier to say it, but that's how I, I do that. that. There's no guarantee that I have tomorrow. I'm just trying to be the best man I can. There's tough times. There's good times. There's all that. That was not related to this. Now that I think that, that's not the best segue. But <laughs> as, you're, as you're making decisions and you're living life and you're trying to like figure out what you're supposed to do, there's all these decisions to do and all these decisions to make. But at the end of the day, love is what wins. So if you're not sure, if you're doubting yourself, go with that. Because really, you know, we see some hate, we see anger out there, we see people don't have our backs, all that. It's out there. But at the end of the day, there's more than that, there's bigger than that. You have your tribe, you have your family, you have all that around you, and that's the best part of ourselves, and remember that. Those friends that you might have some trouble with, don't let that anger or whatever stick with you if you had some trouble that happens around this year as people are graduating, don't let that stick with you, just give it up, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about the blame. Give it up, just move on. Not move on and forget them, but move on from that anger, that hate, whatever. Love is the best part of us, remember that. That was, like, I think, the first photo we ever took. And, like, it's so grainy because the camera is, you know, I don't know if they even exist in the It was Walmart. A little picture booth. Right. And that, that's a little fancy. That was like an automated camera at a wedding. I'm very bald there. <laughs> That's like the right there. <laughs> this is a photo I took at like the senior end of the year thing. A little selfie of oh, some of you are here who are on the stage with me. Yeah. Um, you guys want to go out in the world, and it really is a sweet sorrow. It's, it's that bittersweet thing. Of, like you guys are going to go out there and do amazing things. And I'm so excited for you guys. 
I know you're gonna do great. If you're not sure, and you're like, but what about me? Turn around and look at the back of the room and look at everyone who's, who's been around me before. I told them the same thing, they know it. They're gonna go out there and do great things and people in the back of the room, that's what they're doing. People in the front of the room, that's what they're doing too. Okay? But it is. And when teachers tell you, if you need some help, you need something, you need a letter read, you need a reference, you, you got it from me, and the only way I know is you, you let me know that you need it, but I'll have your back. Now, then, you jump in the water at the river, like, you know I got your back. One of my favorite books of all time is The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Can you in the back and read that? Out of curiosity? All right, read the book. Okay. Um, there's a moment in there where it's, it's a journey about a boy who's trying to figure out his life and what he's supposed to do. And then there's a moment where he goes off on a tangent and he's supposed to go to this, on top of this mountain to see this wise man in a palace. And he gets in there and he goes to this wise man and says, okay, what's the meaning to life, the universe, and everything? And he doesn't say 42. What he says is, here's a spoon with some oil. All right? Yeah, that joke was from the Douglas Adams quote from earlier on. I appreciate that. That's really great. Um, but here's here's a spoon with some oil. Walk around the palace, the whole palace, and don't spill anything. So he walks around the whole palace, and he comes back hours later, and the wise man asks him, asks him, asks him, did you see all the paintings? Did you see all the sculptures? Did you see all the, the beautiful architecture that was in this palace? He goes, that's a great job that you didn't spill the oil, but did you see everything in there? He's like, oh no, I didn't. So he went and did it again. And he looked at all the things that were just remarkable about the palace. Walked around hours. Comes back. He goes, yeah, you're right. I missed all that. It was amazing. It was beautiful. He said one thing. He's gone. But they look at the spoon, and it's empty. Because while he was paying attention to all the beauty, forgot, forgot the spoon and the oil and spilled it all over the palace. So the idea is, here's this kid trying to figure out what the meaning to life is. How are you supposed to be happy? How are you trying to, how are you supposed to live in this world? And then both lessons failed that. But that wasn't the point. The lesson was the fact that you can fail at both. The fact is, and the secret is, you've got to go out into the world and look at this beauty. You're supposed to go off to college and move out of your house and go out there and do all those things. Challenge yourself. Move yourself out of that bubble. This is your bubble and what you're used to doing. You need to get out of that to make your bubble bigger. If there's something you don't know how to do, you gotta do something outside of that knowledge and it makes it bigger. You keep doing it. You're going out in the world and doing that. At the whole at the same time while you're walking around the palace looking at the beauty, you gotta remember that oil that's in that spoon. That's your family, that's your morals, that's who you are. That's the people around you who have your back. If that's what you're trying to remember, where are you going to go do that? So as you go off to college, you move out, move to a different state, whatever it is, you remember those things while you're out there doing it all. That's the secret. And I feel like there's always some need, need of assurance at the end. <coughs> so the idea is, you're gonna be all right. So this is me, my dad, my mom, my nana. We didn't really come from much. This is us in Australia in a brick house. And my dad passed when I was young, like I said, and he was tough on the whole family. But, but we're all right. And my family just keeps growing. And keeps getting better and evolving. That's what it is. It's the people who show up to say congratulations after they find out that, you know, you got a new job. And they, you know, that picture represents not just those people, but the people in the room who did it from the beginning. It's the friends who show up because they know that you're going through a hard time and they're like, hey, let's make some coffee. And they know I'm going to make some coffee. <laughs> that, that's good. I'm going to hide behind my wrap. It's also the family who should be a little upset with you, but instead are proud of you. It's the unexpected, but it's the family and that's how you know you're going to be all right. You have the people around you who are always going to have your back forever. That's me, that's the people in this room. You know it. You know who those people are who aren't in this room. You know it, but you're going to be all right. Me, the change that you wish to see in the world is something that has been a part of me since I started working here and I was trying to figure that out. Um, 
um, obviously put my mouth into my office or on my back when I was in charge of class. Um, but that's evolved through the years what that what that really means. I used a, a quote when I got the job as a teacher here, what, 12 years ago. And they asked me, why do you switch around your job so many times? And they were kind of questioning why I wanted to be a teacher. And what I said was, I read a quote that says, your work is to find your work and then give your whole heart to it. So your job, your work, is to find out what your job is supposed to be and you're supposed to give yourself to it. And that's what I was in the future. I feel like that's what I did. I found it, I'm supposed to do it. Then I had this interview for a new job and I went to go like, all right, I'm gonna misquote this, I'm gonna go find it. So I go look for it. I found out that I had misquoted it the first time. I'm like, I'm gonna go the job. What's your that quote? <laughs> but the quote is, is your work is to find your world and give your whole heart to it. That's what I'm doing now. That's what I'm ultimately be doing this whole time. Is you think of the world, you talk about the world, and you think of it as like the like globe, the earth. But your world is the world around you. For me, it's here. This is my world. I'm giving my whole heart to it. That's what I know. Is at the end of the day, I'm going to be able to give, and it's going to make me successful. And how I define it is that I know what that what that is. Now. That be the change you wish to see in the world. This idea, like, be the change in the back of the shirt, that it, for me is evolving into this change in the world. This is my world. I know what I'm doing. There. I know that. That's my focus. That's my passion. That's my purpose. I know it. So as I'm going through that and reworking that and figuring that out, and as I'm writing this this last lesson and figuring out how I'm going to change it and improve it, I felt like it needed to culminate in one thing. Like how do these pieces come together for me? Like for me right now, it kind of goes off of what I've been saying, like kind of throughout, which is. You're supposed to be finding your passion. You're supposed to be finding your purpose. Find your purpose. And you're supposed to be doing it with your whole heart. If you can do those three things, I'm telling you that not only can you make a difference, not only can you make a difference, and not only can you make great things happen, but that is truly how I believe you can change the world. Passion, <coughs> purpose, the heart, if you do that, you're going to be okay. You're going to be all right. That's how you can make these things happen. And that changing your world, that doesn't have to be some big, great thing. It can be just a small world around you. It can be your family. Like, you define that. Success is how you define it. All that kind of accumulates into to one thing, and I want to end with some thank yous. So obviously, thank you to all my current students during the class right now who helped me get here, uh, my former students in the class who helped me get here, thank you to my former students who really reached out and helped me grow, even though they think that I was helping them, you guys are helping me. For those of you who are in one ASB, it's the same thing, like, as you're trying to change your world and your world, there's no way you can do that without it going another direction. You guys can change me and mold me. Like, I really am thankful to Mission World because Mission World made me and I like I've done what it's done for me. Um, it's the students in the room who give you a journal and it's like, hey, do you, why are you doubting yourself? You're cold people do it. And you know, thanks, Joe. Like, you get the journal. Um, it's the friends who will always be there for you even if you're not there every moment. Like, we know that. Um, it's the students who come back from year one, you know, but just like, like when I tell you guys I want to help, I, once you're good, once you're good, I believe that. But the way that happens, though, it's two ways that I, I want that to be. It's the only reason why I have an Instagram. It's not about me, really. It's about letting you know what's going on with me. Because every once in a while, someone will see something and be like, hey, I knew you did that. And suddenly it starts a conversation. That's really the only way I use it. It's the reason why I have it. Every once in a while, there's something out there I think is funny. And, I'm doing it. <laughs> and then always the biggest thing is the only reason why I can do all this, the only reason I can be who I am, is because of my wife. I mean, thank you it isn't enough. Really thank you for, I mean, if you're here right now, thanks for letting me do this. And you're going to be doing something else right now. And I appreciate you allowing me to. And for the people who came in, I really wasn't expecting 
people that come in, like, you know, a couple people, hey, I'm bored today. I'm, this Starbucks nearby, like, it's on the way home. <laughs> and then you did, and then obviously, I mean, you guys went out. Thank you. Um,